Okay, crew, welcome back. Sorry about that last video. I recognize that I was using a bad marker and I had the lights on. Maybe you couldn't see again. Our victors, Claudia and Declan. Okay, it's Tuesday. You have eaten all of your candy and you've stayed up all night and you're exhausted. That's too bad because this is one of the most challenging things in all of economics because it relies a lot on math. I'm actually going to walk you through just the definitions and the graphs today and we're going to talk about why it's important we're not even going to bust into the math until Thursday so that being said no numbers I promise here we go just graphs and an idea in fact here's my definition Matt is going to show you a video with a complicated definition that you may or may not understand I'm just going to use my definition because I think it's easier to understand this is about the idea of elasticity and in in this case, we're going to talk about the elasticity of demand. And what that really means is, do you care, consumer, if I change the price? And uh, if you care a lot, then we would call that like a very elastic demand. Uh, it would mean that a rubber band is not very elastic. You run away from the product. It's a super high price. Get me out of here. So this is a very elastic demand curve. You can see that um, up here. I am not going to buy very many products at this high price. But if I lower the price just a little bit, there is a lot more people that are going to be purchasing this product. They're rushing in. Now, vice versa, or conversely, if I raise the price just a little bit, everybody runs away. And where do they run away to? They run away to a different product, or they just choose not to buy it whatsoever. So we're talking about an elastic demand curve. What kind of thing would have an, an elastic demand curve? Well, products that are like perfectly substitutable or almost parallel products, so like uh, different brands of milk, you might not care at all. And so if one of them raised the price, you would just simply turn to the next milk in the refrigerator aisle, pick up that milk and run. And so would everybody else, meaning that uh, everybody would run away from this raised price for this milk product. Same thing happens for any product that you don't need. So a luxury item, uh, designer goods, anything that raises in price, you might just say, I simply don't need that and I'm going to walk away. The opposite over here is what's called inelastic demand. And uh, again, another way to think about it is I don't care at all if the price changes on this. In fact, the rubber band, the elasticity is so tight, it's keeping me here, it's keeping me at this product. And no matter what you do to the price, I'm probably going to buy it anyway, which might sound crazy until you think about what kind of products might have an inelastic demand. If you have heart disease and you take heart disease pills, no matter what happens to that price, you are probably going to purchase this product. Uh, you might not like it. It might break your bank, but it's the thing that's keeping you alive and change of price is not going to change how much of it you consume. So a lot of times, any kind of drug, prescription, alcohol, tobacco, changes in price aren't going to actually affect how much you need to consume because, well, whether it's life-saving or whether it's an addiction or both, um, you need this quantity to maintain the status quo. So again, um, and this could probably easily be vertical. If I raise the price to here, there's probably only a couple people that might be able to choose to lower their quantity and not consume this product despite the large increase. So again, heart disease medicine is not perfectly substitutable. You can't just say, I'm going to take some acne facial wash as a product instead of my heart disease medicine. So this is very inelastic supply. Again, you are bound to it. The rubber band is tight. This is very elastic. A price changes and you rush in because it's a great deal all of a sudden. Or if the price raises, you rush out of the market and go buy something else. So elastic, inelastic. A company really wants to take their product, if at all possible, from being elastic to inelastic. So there's a lot of time, and this is what one of the activities and the discussions and the readings and class is going to be about today. How do people use marketing and um, advertising and other kinds of propaganda to make you feel like no matter what happens to the price, I must have that product. I'm still going to buy just as much as I was buying before. There's one other thing that we're going to add. If you calculate this, and I won't get into the math, and I won't get into the equations, but it is a calculation. It's what we're going to do on Thursday. If you calculate this, and the slope is perfectly one-to-one, -one, 
a raise in price by one, reduces the quantity by one. That is not called elastic or inelastic. It just happens to be unit elastic, one-to-one -one slope for elasticity. Okay, I would ask you if you have any questions, but there's nobody in the room with me. So, if you have questions, ask Maddie. She's your teacher, and she can let me know if you have questions, and I will make a video. Nobody's requested a video yet, so here I am doing whatever I feel like on my Saturday afternoons. It's raining, so this is a good place to be. It's nice to be with you. I miss you.